What's up, Data Nation? My name's Ryan, and we are gathered here once again to spill the tea on 3DG. That's data, driven, demand, generation. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create an automated Google Analytics dashboard in less than five minutes. Sound good? Let's do it. There are a ton of great tools out there for creating dashboards and visualizations using your data. However, they often carry a cost and can be time intensive to learn. For our automated dashboard today, we're going to be using all free tools provided by Google and that require minimal effort to configure. Before we get started, I do want to note that this particular dashboard requires conversion tracking be in place. I'll include a link to the how-to video in the description down below. Once logged into the Google account associated with your analytics, navigate to datastudio.google.com. Data Studio is a free Google tool that allows you to create interactive dashboards using a variety of data sources. To get started on our dashboard, click on the Acme Marketing example. This will be our base template for creating a more robust report. Then we're going to click Use Template and we're going to change it so that we've got the correct data source associated. Go ahead and click Create Get New Data Source. Select Google Analytics, and we're going to choose the analytics account associated with this. From there, click the property and then select all website data for the view, and then click Connect. We're going to leave all of these other fields as is and click Add to Report. And finally, Copy Report. By default, Google is going to provide us with a lot of high-level information, but it doesn't quite jump down into conversions, so we're going to change this up a little bit. To start, move Sessions over and Page Views over, as well as Bounce Rate. Next, we're going to copy this bounce rate and paste it onto the page. Don't worry, we're going to change this metric pretty soon. Over here on the data configuration, we can see that our default metric is bounce rate. Click on bounce rate and change it to all goal completions. You'll see our number has changed here. We're going to leave the how our site sessions trending alone. What this does is it shows us the sessions for the last 30 days versus the previous 30 days, so we can see if there's any unique trends there. Next, we're going to actually delete this top countries by session, as well as the table below it. Then we're going to change the headline to say top performing channels. From there, we're going to add a new chart that's a table. What we'd like to see here is a breakdown of the channels by number of sessions, conversions, and conversion rate, so we need to update this data. Let's change the dimension to channels. Next we need to add in our different performance metrics. After adding in sessions, let's go through and add our goal completions. And finally, goal conversion rate. You can also rename the labels that are associated with this and adjust how the table looks. The next thing we want to look at is performance by device. We'll change this title to performance by device. And then delete the old graph that's in there. To save ourselves a little bit of time, we can go ahead and just copy this old table because we want to look at sessions, goals, and conversion rates based on the device that they're using.
Once we've copied and pasted it in the channels, we're just gonna change this to device category. Our fifth section is demographic data. We wanna keep the demographic data and we're just gonna reposition it over here to the right. Now we're going to create an interactive map that looks at the United States in this example, but instead of it being broken out by country, we're gonna look at it broken out by city. Go ahead and insert another chart. And if you scroll down, you'll see the geo chart here and just add it to the section. If you're a local based business or a national based business, as opposed to a global business, you might want to change your geo dimension. In our case, we're going to change this to city. Then we're going to change our metric to sessions. And then finally, adjust our zoom area to be just the United States. Finally, we want to see some performance data based on how users are interacting once they land on our website. So we're going to create a top landing page with page views and conversions report. Let's go ahead and add that last table. This time change the dimension to landing pages. And then we've already got page views in there, but let's go ahead and add conversions. And if we want to, we can clean up some of the design elements on this page as well, just to help it flow a little bit better. And finally, let's just relabel this as your company name slash monthly report. Follow a similar process for how you title the Data Studio report. Now there are plenty of other options of how we could modify this report and tons of different charts and visualizations that we can use. For our purposes, we find this gives a nice high level overview for how the organization is doing with digital marketing. In order to automate this report, we're gonna go up to this share section and click schedule email delivery. From there, we can add as many different recipients as we want and include a custom email subject if we wanted as well. For now, we'll just leave this blank and it will show up as your company slash Google Analytics report. You can also include a custom message. Next, we'll select the delivery date. In this case, we're gonna choose the first of each month, starting with the next month. Next, we're gonna choose a start time. And in this case, we're gonna choose the first day of the next month, in this case, October of 2020. Then we're gonna change the repeat frequency to custom and deliver it on the first day of each month. And click schedule. Now every month on the first of the month at 8 a.m., you'll receive this report in your inbox. We set up similar reports for our clients each month so they can get a quick gut check on how things are going. If you're interested in this type of report but don't feel like going through the configuration the way that we did it, we'll also include a link to a sample report that you can make a copy of and use with your Google Analytics account. And that's a wrap on today's walkthrough. If you enjoyed this type of how-to content, give us a like, comment any questions you have down below, and as always, subscribe to get datafied.